Welcome to Chandler in Focus. Um, my name is uh, Terry Rowe. I'm a councilman here in Chandler, and I'm here with Jason Scouten. Is that correct? That is correct. And he's with the Chandler Police Department, and we're going to talk a little bit about identity theft. And uh, so, but before we get started on that, uh, Jason, tell us a little bit about you and what your assignment is. And I'm a I'm a currently a detective with the Chandler Police Department. I'm assigned to the Financial Crimes Unit. I've actually been with the department for just about 13 years now, and I've been, actually been in the financial crimes unit for the last seven years. So financial crimes, is that like bank robberies or what? Uh... Financial crimes, we primarily fo focus on things that involve fraud. Um, so we, we're talking about check fraud, credit card fraud, um, embezzlements that have to do with businesses, especially with uh, identity theft. Those are the main focuses that our unit uh, deals with. Okay, so you said identity theft, and that's kind of a, you know, you hear about that in the news a little bit, and, uh, but uh, what, why don't you just tell us a little bit, what is identity theft? Identity theft is where uh, people are, are using your personal identifying information to either, either use a ruse on you to make you a victim of a scam, or they're using that information in order to uh, obtain financial gain. In, in the long run, no matter how you look at it, their goal is to use you for their financial gain. So uh, that could be in a lot of different ways, for sure. So, uh, so how much of, it, of an issue is, is identity theft here in Chandler? Well, identity theft is a nation, nationwide problem. And uh, with our modern day of digital communications, it doesn't matter if you live in a safe city like Chandler, everybody has uh, vulnerabilities to these, these types of scams and these types of frauds that um, people out there like to, like to do. All right, and then uh, so, uh, Talk about uh, possible victims. I mean, we've got uh, over 200,000 people that li live here in Chandler. We people come on vacation and stay and, uh, and families. Who, who is, uh, who's mostly like to, likely to be a victim? Anybody is likely to be a victim. Um, the, the, nobody's, nobody, not even children, because when children are born here, they obviously get a social security number as well. A lot of it just depends on what specific motive that particular scammer or that particular criminal what their end goal is and, and what their method of operation is and what they want to do. Some groups, uh, for what they want to do, they may, they may specifically target children because they think it'll be undetected that to see that their social security number is not being used. Other groups like to particularly target uh, senior citizens. Um, it's a more trusting generation and also because of the hard work they've done their whole life, they tend to have a lot more assets that they want to try and get a hold of. Okay, so um, for our viewers, uh, let's talk about uh, what are some of the different kind of scams that are going on out there. These people are thinking long and hard every day on how they can take people's money. What? Give me some examples. Well, some of the some of the main ones. Obviously, there's there's general identity theft where they're using your information, specifically your social security number, to obtain some kind of credit. And again, that's to gain financial, that's to get financial gain. That's to gain, uh, gain some kind of credit account, some kind of credit card, something they can use for their benefit. Um, there's other things uh, that have to do with credit card fraud where um, they are trying to obtain your credit card number either through hacking or through skimming. And skimming is using an electronic device that captures all of the information off the magnetic strip on your card. And the major part that we see of those nowadays is you, you still will have your card in your possession but they stole the information off of it and they duplicated a card and now they go on a spending spree. Um, again, using it, using it for their benefit um, to, to try and make a profit. Um, there's also check fraud. That's, that's people stealing your checking account, stealing your checking account number. It's very easy nowadays to go and make a, a bad check with software you can pick up at, a, um, at an office, uh, any of your local office supply stores. Um, and then they get right in and the money immediately comes right out of your account because it looks, it appears to be a legitimate check. Um, those are some of the things that have to do with actual using your identity and using some of your stuff. Some of the other scams that are out there aren't necessarily wanting to use your identity, but they are wanting to try and dupe you into something you believe is legitimate and to um, get you to somehow give them money. And they do that through cold, through cold calling um, calling your house. They, do, they, uh, they can do it through uh, what we call phishing emails where they can send you emails that might look like it's legitimately from a bank. Um, or they try and do some other thing of what I guess you could say is a confidence scheme. They, yeah. they are wanting to dupe you into giving them money. 
okay, so cold calling, and uh, you know, I know we were gonna, we have a lot of information uh, that we could go on and on, but uh, cold calling. So somebody just calls you up and gets your money? No, there, there's usually so, there's usually some kind of uh, prearranged scheme or, or something of that nature um, that they're going to do. And, and something that makes it easier nowadays is that um, people have the ability to spoof, spoof phone numbers. So um, they can make a phone number appear like it's a local United States area code, but they're actually calling over an internet connection from a completely different country. And sometimes they, they can call up and they can, uh, to the elderly, they can pretend to be one of their grandchildren who's in distress and they need money immediately to bail them out or for some kind of operation. Or some of the ones that have been seen in the news is they call up pretending to be IRS agents, threatening to take you to jail, saying they're going to put a warrant out for your arrest unless you pay them this money, this is what you owe them. Um, and they call thousands and thousands of people at a time and they... Uh, every once in a while they find someone that is able to be convinced that it's true and they end up giving them money. And this is the, these, these scammers, these, this is their full-time job. This is, this is how they make a living. So, uh, yeah, somebody calling and saying they're with the IRS and demanding money. Uh, I, I, I imagine sometimes that is effective. It, it has, have, you, have you taken reports where that people have given up money for that? We take reports like that all of the time. And in fact, one of my fellow detectives not too long ago had several voice messages on her home phone that were from the IRS and her caller ID showed up with a 202 area code, which is out of Washington, DC. Um, and that's, that's, to, that's to make the entire thing look like it's legitimate. Um, and, and the message was very threatening, saying you are being investigated for a criminal activity for tax evasion with the IRS. You need to call this number back. And, and the, we call it a cold call because they want to get you scared. They want to get you to call that number back, which is an 800 number they set up. And that's where they're going to work into you on trying to convince you that you owe them a bunch of money. And if you want to get out of it, you have to send them money through, you know, uh, Western Union or MoneyGram or uh, buy a green dot card. Um, those are some of the typical forms of uh, money transfer that these, these crooks like to use. So this, is, uh, so this is really big stuff. And I know that uh, we talked earlier and I know uh, I have been a victim of uh, identity theft in, on a vacation. And, uh, and, and I certainly know, I've seen the phishing uh, emails and that sort of thing. And, um, and what about, uh, and apparently you know some people that have ha had been, been victims, in, including yeah, or or at least or at least had made the made the attempt. Um, we do get we do get calls from people that do want to pass us pass us along the information to work with, where they could recognize it as a scam, but they didn't fall victim to it. But we do get a lot of cases where they did fall victim to it, and we do everything we can. It, it, sometimes it becomes difficult when we end up finding out that the perpetrators are outside of the United States. Um, that's obviously very limiting on our power. And, and even me, as, as an example, I, I have all the computer protections you, anybody would have on their, uh, their computer. But a couple years ago, my PayPal account got hacked by somebody in Israel. Um, and, f and for a while, there, there, uh, there was a lot of money that had come out of my account that I didn't have in there until an investigation was done. And you know, they'd realized, yeah, you're a victim. This, these weren't your transactions. So we're all vulnerable. Okay, detective, we have managed to scare everybody just a little <laughs> bit. And, uh, but uh, it really isn't about scaring people, it's about making people uh, aware. And, uh, and uh, so, uh, so give us some ideas on uh, what folks can do to uh, protect themselves. Well, the, the good thing is, is that, and of course, like you said, we don't wanna scare people, but when you think about it, if you're aware of these types of things that go on, as scary as they may be, now it's in the back of your head and it gives you the ability to be more vigilant and, and gives you the ability to uh, recognize the, those kind of things. When you, when you take that knowledge and the power you have from that knowledge and then you also incorporate it, incorporate it with just developing some very basic daily um, habits, you can very much decrease the likelihood that you will be a victim of one of, one of these types of scams. Okay, so I'm, I just go through a day, you know, I'll let, uh, and it might, it, might not, it might not be just a daily thing. It might be a weekly thing. It might be a monthly thing. One good example is shredding your documents, documents that have uh, you know, any personal information on them. Instead of just throwing them in the trash, either burning them or, uh, it, or, or shredding them, buying, buying a, a simple shredder you would get at, at an office supply store. 
um, one of the ways that, that uh, people like to steal identities is simply going through the trash. Um, but if you have all your documents shredded up, they're not going to mess with it. They, they would have to literally put together thousands of pieces of paper. Um, the other thing to think about is think about what, what people want to do. And, and another example is uh, with credit cards. Um, the, the big thing that's going on now is what I had mentioned before is with uh, credit card skimmers. And some of the things to think about is, yes, debit cards, credit cards, very, very convenient. They're, 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 they're great conveniences for the consumer. But sometimes you do need to be, be a little bit protective, and sometimes you might want to think in certain, not all situations, but in certain situations, I might want to have cash on me. And an, an example is, is some of the digital skimmers that we see are on gas pumps. And particularly, these people like to put them on gas pumps all along the major corridors where people are, tra are doing interstate travel. Um, if, if you don't travel that much, there's nothing wrong with carrying some extra cash and just it's not much of an inconvenience to walk in and actually hand cash to pay for your gas to the cashier instead of swiping it at, at the pump. So that's for our vacationers? Is that what you're saying? That's, that's for people that travel yeah, a lot? Yeah, that, that's, uh, that's for people that travel a lot. And, and, and it's something if, if you want to increase that vigilance, you can do it all the time when you're purchasing gas. Uh, I, I, everybody might have different frequencies. Um, you know, some people might have to put gas in almost every day because they have a long commute. Uh, people like me, it's it's every few days, um, and it and it just depends on do you use that same gas station? Do you trust the pumps? Um, a lot of them do have the little security stickers that you may see go across the uh, the panel that opens up to get to the electronics. That's where those skimmers actually get put. You can't see them. They are actually they are actually attached to the uh, electronics part of it. But being aware of that just makes you think. Well, what do I want to do? Do I want to get into some of these habits to think about it? I, for one, when I do travel and I'm driving in the car, I always bring cash because I know for a fact from all my investigations that that is the major place that these skimmers get put. Okay, so uh, so uh, that, that's a nice tip for our vacationers, you know. And, Absolutely. Uh, because, uh, you know, uh, you, you hate to be on vacation and uh, find out your card has been uh, over limited or something like that, and mm -hmm. uh, that can ruin a good vacation. And, uh, but uh, one, one group we talked a little bit about was uh, the elderly. And so uh, um, while everyone could be a victim, um, the elderly uh, certainly are, are, are more of a target in many cases. So uh, what, what about the elderly? What, can you, what, can, what do you have more tips for them specifically? Well, it, the, the, the tips I would say, and, and this would be primarily uh, for the senior citizens, but a lot, of, a lot of people can also take these to heart because they can be victims of it too, is... Uh, we don't want to say distrust everybody, but maybe be a little bit more skeptical. I mean, it's once been said, trust but verify. Uh, you know, that's been, a, that's been a famous phrase that's been said. Um, there's many different ways that people are going to try and do a confidence scheme. And, uh, you know, the biggest thing that we say is if, it's, if it sounds too good to be true, it is. Um, so if you have somebody calling up and, uh, you know, they, they say that they're a grandchild, What's the harm in, in saying, well, it could be my grandchild, but I'm going to go ahead and call their parents first and say, hey, do you know what's going on? Um, another example, you know, a lot of people communicate through, uh, through digital media, through the Internet, um, through email, through Facebook and things like that. Email accounts, Facebook accounts, they can be hacked. And, and I know I had one such case where a lady thought she was sending money to her sister because she got contacted by her sister. It turned out her... Um, sister's account had been, or her Facebook account had been hacked. Well, the, the one step it could have been was instead of just trusting it on Facebook, uh, give my sister a call and say, hey, I got this message from you, you know, is everything all right? And right there it would have been discovered, no, this, no, my account has been hacked. Uh, this wasn't me that requested you to, to send this large amount of money through Western Union. So if someone is, uh well, an elderly person, uh, sometimes they, uh, you know, in their life, they find themselves living alone. Yes. Uh, there's, there's some wisdom in uh, leaning on another family member to, uh, to uh, run things by them. Say, hey, what do you think about this? Should I do this? Should I invest in this? Or should I, I got a call like this and, and, and have a trusted family member, you know, uh, give them advice? I mean, Abs absolutely. One of the, one of the, one of the very specific, uh, scams that's out there is called the sweetheart swin swindle and anybody can be a victim of it but the senior citizens do see it quite a bit and that's because they might be living alone uh, they might be at that point in their life where they're they're feeling lonely 
and they might be conducting an a, a online relationship through someone that they've never met and they're manipulating, they're manipulating feelings and everything, making me think that this is, this is somebody I really like when their end goal is just to come up with some kind of sob story to get you to send them a bunch of money. Um, that, that's just not true. It's just their way of making profit. And, and even, even uh, something else to be aware of is there's, there's groups of people that will actually do this in person. They will get somebody you know, working for a non-traditional organized crime group um, and, and we say that because it's, it's usually fam families of groups that do these kind of things. Um, they will get somebody to befriend somebody and they will literally spend weeks and months befriending you, thinking you're in this great relationship when really they don't care about you and their goal is to get you to transfer all your assets over to them. Um, and they work at it because they might see, well, this is worth several months of work because someone might have the amount of assets that are worth it. So we're not telling people to... Uh break up with their no. their boyfriend or their girlfriend no. or whatever but we are saying you know uh, you know uh, involve your family you yeah. know? and your uh, your family members are going to see it we see it yeah. all the time when we get these when we do these kind of investigations there's always another family member who we'll talk to and it will have said i have this is what i've seen i've told them this you know they weren't listening to me or or um, they just don't believe that it's true but but usually your family members they're they're coming at it from a different perspective and they love you. They're not. They're not there to. They're not there to try and make your life miserable. They're there because they love you and they want to protect you. Um, and having that different perspective, a lot of times, what we've seen in our investigation turns out to be right on the money. Okay, detective. And then uh, okay. So uh, also, just in in your everyday, what about uh, anybody, uh, seniors included? Uh, you know, going to an ATM or whatever. Is that uh, any anything about that? That uh, you know, uh, is there steps that they might take when they're approaching an ATM or is a, are some ATMs better than others, uh, you know? Uh, yeah. And this comes, this comes, this comes back to good habits. The, the skimming devices that I, that I talked about later, they're employed in a lot of, a lot of different formats. For example, the one I said, the ones that are internally put in the gas pumps, there are ones that are externally put on ATMs. Um, and they do a very good job of molding them to make them look a lot like the ATM machine. Um, it, the some of the ways to get around that is is they don't they don't attach them with they just use sticky tape and stuff like that. If you walk up to an ATM that you're not used to going to and, and it, there's nothing wrong with the place where you insert your card, feel feel if it's really part of that machine. If it's not, the if there's an actual skimmer device on it, it's going to break off. Um, so there's that's an extra two seconds. You walk up to an ATM, you shake that little thing and and see if it looks solid. See if it if it looks to be part of the actual. Um, if, if it's part of the actual machine, they, it's impossible to put them internally um, because of all the security procedures that go in, go in with ATMs. And another way too is, is when you can, try to use the same ATM at the same bank. Uh, that way you're familiar with it. That way you know what it looks like all the time. Um, that way, that way you, you have that confidence and you feel trusted. Um, on, on an outside note, obviously we don't just use these cards for ATMs. We use them for all of our everyday transactions. Sure. And, uh, you know, one of the things to think about, and one thing that, that I'd changed on my habit when I, you know, started getting these kind of cases to investigate is we all love to get, you know, people, it's an American tradition that people regularly go out to eat. And when you think about it, if you go to a sit down restaurant, what do you do? You give somebody your card that you don't know, they're just serving you for that day and they walk away with that card out of your sight. We have had cases where, um, People have been recruited for one reason or another in a restaurant to just carry a small little electronic skimming device with them. And when they go back to run your card, they're gonna run the card, but they're also just gonna do a quick swipe. And a week or two later, they've got hundreds and hundreds of credit card numbers that they, they get paid a little fee for to give it back to a scammer who's now gonna go create hundreds and hundreds of cloned credit cards. And all of a sudden you're gonna have all these, these statements on there. Well, again, that kind of goes with the same thing with the gas pumps. Maybe if I go out to eat, maybe I want to think about what my bill is and maybe, maybe bring cash with me instead. And it, it's, not, it's not as likely as people think, but from my point of view, really good people that are, they can, they can have a you know, moment of corruption where they, someone can recruit them. 
it does happen. We need to accept that 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 is a reality. Yeah, some a lot of nice people make bad decisions sometimes yes. in their life. It, and, it does uh, so happen, and, of... and you never know if you're going to happen to be the person that's there when they do that. All right. Well, we keep uh, we keep putting it out there about these things, but we want to give people uh, uh, some uh, some resources for protecting themselves a little bit. And so, uh, what are some uh, what are some uh, sources for checking the legitimacy of a business that uh, you know that has maybe called you or approached you and you know, uh, whether that's the IRS or, 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 uh, or, or a local charity or, a, or whatever. Yeah, there, there, is, there, there are resources for that. And, but, and before to say that, to, to add an extra bit of vigilance is um, one thing you'd want to be extra vigilant on and not saying that it's not legitimate, but you should always be very skeptical if you have a bit, someone from a business coming to the house trying to offer you a discount or something like that. Um, they could be there for completely legitimate reasons, but unfortunately there are a lot of uh, groups that go around there and that is their way to perpetrate a, fr a fraud on you um, and, uh, you know, try and talk you into, oh, we have a great deal and they're going door to door to do it. Well, it, you know, there's nothing wrong to, you know, get a card from them or get a phone number and say, well, let me think about it and, and, and send them away if it's something that you really do want. And then you can go to the resources. So a lot of the resources, one of the biggest ones everybody knows is obviously the Better Business Bureau. Um, you, if you run a, a business name through the Better Business Bureau and the name's not even popping up, I would be very leery of that business. Um, now, the other, the other and, and that's not always going to be the case, it could be a very small business that just hasn't had any kind of reporting or anything with the Better Business Bureau. But you can also check with the local register of contractors, and you can also check with the Corporation Commission. Um, usually businesses are going to have some kind of registration through them um, to, to see if they're there. And then the, the biggest thing, that, and this is one of the nice things about the internet, is that you can just do a simple Google or a Yahoo search on the business. And if they're a business that's known for doing bad stuff um, or, or even, even being part of a scam, it's going to come up pretty quick on those, those general search engines. Um, you, they, it will pop up there, and you might see people giving complaints to a point where you can say, well, I may not want to go with this business necessarily. They yeah. don't have a good reputation or they, they have a reputation of taking people's monies and not, not completing jobs. So, uh, so really, uh, first of all, probably should not make big financial decisions or choices without running that past somebody. Absolutely. And, and doing some due diligence, doing the uh, checking the internet, involving family and or trusted friends to try and make a, an important or good decision and, uh, so that because again, we know people that have been victims, including ourselves, of uh, of this kind of stuff. So uh, it can be sometimes very believable. So uh, it's uh, so there's some good choices there. And uh, what else we want to talk to you about? Um, okay, so let's say you find your, maybe one of our viewers today finds themselves uh, uh, a victim, and uh, there's no shame in that. It happens. And uh, so what what can they do? What what's what should they do? Well, it, obvious, and it, and, and it all depends on what specifically is. We've, we've talked about a lot of different, different types of, of crimes and scams that we are seeing out there. Um, but the one thing you do, you do want to do, besides taking care of things with your banks and stuff like that, is you obviously want to um, file a police report. And, and it's good to do that first because what will end up happening if you start going to the credit bureaus, if you start going to your bank and stuff like that, that's actually the first thing they're going to tell you is that you need to file a police report. Um, and uh, in the state of Arizona, and I know a lot of other states have this, wherever you're living, that agency is responsible for taking that initial report and, and doing at least an initial investigation. That's what we do here in Chandler. We try and see if we, if we have the connections here or, or if it's out of state or at another agency, if we can get another detective involved. Um, because we obviously want to want to take care of it. Um, and and that, that handles the criminal aspect of, and, and trying to bring people to justice. But um, doing things like going to the Social Security Administration and, and checking the report on your Social Security number, you can also do that through the Department of Economic Security to see if anybody's been using it for um, wages. And then, of course, you can get your uh, credit reports through the three major credit reporting bureaus, uh, Experian, Equifax, and, and TransUnion. And from each one of those, there's a federal law that says you have to get a free one, uh, one free one every year. Um, so it's, it's good to go to those resources and, and get an overall picture of what has been done to me. What, what am I looking at? Uh, you know, is it small scale or is it big scale? So 
okay, so somebody believes or has discovered, you know, and uh, you got to look at your credit card statements, your bank statements, you got to pay attention to that stuff or have people help you do that, right? Yes. Okay, I'm right so far. And so then after that, uh, you're, uh, and you discovered that maybe there's a loss or that somebody's made a purchase that you didn't make, uh, you're going to notify the police department and uh, make a police report. Yes. And then, uh, of course, uh, you, you're going to you alert your bank because they will probably take some action on your banking to make sure that you don't have further losses. Is that they right? are going to take? Right? They're going to take a lot of action. They, you're their customer. Yeah. Um, they yeah. they're they're going to take it very seriously, um, and they're they're going to they're going to get you the information you need, which actually helps us because um, they're going to give you the information that we might not be able to get get from them just because of uh, um, uh, banking acts regarding whether or not we have to get court orders to get things. But they're going to give that information to you. Um, that way, it in turn can come to us, and it can help us with our with our investigation. And they're they're going to want to help you um, as much as much as they possibly can, and as much as they're they're allowed to. They don't want to lose you as a customer. Okay. And so, um, uh, the Chandler Police Department's role uh, in, in this. I, I made my police report. Uh, you're going to uh, you're going to take my report and investigate it all the, all the way to the end, or you're going to steer us in the, me in the right direction, or you're going to give me advice, or what? We're, how, how can you help? We're going to do everything we can. Um, one of the one of the things that we do that that may, um, makes it makes it easier for the patrol officers and what we have available to the public is is that on our Chandler Police website, which is um, ChandlerPD.com, we actually have an entire page that's that's dedicated to identity theft. It gives a lot of information on things that you, steps you should take, um, and it also provides on there an identity theft affidavit that you can download. And we actually have people fill that out because it gives us the information that we need so that we can continue and do our investigation. And what will happen is, is once we get that information, we are going to conduct an investigation. We are going to contact our resources. We, we are going to find out the who, what, when, and where. And if it's, if it's people that we have perpetrating it locally, we are going to do everything I, we can to, to arrest and prosecute them. A lot of times, though, and as, as we said at the very beginning, this is a nationwide ep epidemic. We are going to track, try and track down where this is occurring at, and we are going to get that information over to the right people that can investigate it. And that's kind of just common because, obviously, me as a, as a detective or any other police officer, I don't have any powers outside of the state of Arizona. So if I have somebody that used a, a Chandler resident social security number to open up a credit card and they're in uh, Wisconsin, there's not much I can do from prosecuting that person, but I can make contacts over there and I can get the investigation over to them so that they can do it there because they are going to have similar laws on their books that are, that are going to do that. And that, that's what we want to do is we want to get it, progress the cases as far as we can it, so that we can get as close to justice or get the justice that these people deserve that do these kind of things. Well, that is just great information. You know, uh, we could probably talk about this for a, a long time, and uh, but uh, you know, uh, we only have so much time today. We may come back in the future and uh, provide some uh, some other uh, topics or, uh, or or advice on other issues. Uh, certainly, uh, we want our Chandler folks to uh, to be safe. And so, uh, any last um, Quick words that you'd like to share to our Chandler folks? Well, there's there's nothing nothing wrong with being a little bit more skeptical and, and uh, scrutinize it a little, scrutinize everything a little bit more, and that's just from the basic knowledge that there are these people out there that that uh, mean to deprive you of, of your uh, of your money and, and and of your property, and uh, and again the when it when it comes down to it, it, I always go with this phrase: if it sounds too good to be true, it is. Okay, well, Detective Scouten with the uh, Chandler Police Department, thank you for uh, being here today. And, thank you uh, for having me. And uh, folks, thank you uh, for tuning in to uh, another uh, Chandler in Focus, and uh, we will see you next time. Thank you so much. Okay, thank you. Thank you.